Now, from the nation's capital, here's the Pentagon Channel's ATS in brief. Defense Secretary Robert Gates says time is of the essence in getting MRAPs to the front lines. He argues the mine-resistant ambush-protected vehicles are the best defense there is against IEDs in Iraq. And Tuesday evening, he took that message to Capitol Hill. The Pentagon Channel's Army Sergeant Lee McMahon sat down with three of the top men leading the MRAP charge this week. She tells us what she learned. One point is perfectly clear. Right now we know one thing that soldiers and Marines need improved protection and that MRAP is the immediate solution. Getting more MRAPs into the field isn't just a matter of buying more, defense officials say. It's a matter of testing and working with industry and other branches of service to get the right product to the troops as quickly as possible. We also have got folks at the Naval Space Warfare Command down in Charleston, South Carolina that are integrating all of the government furnished equipment into these vehicles, the radios, the jammers, intercommunication systems, the Blue Force trackers, all of those things that make them truly mission capable. And that's being done by the group down at, uh, as I said, at Spay War in Charleston. So this has truly been a joint effort, not one done solely by the Marine Corps. No matter how quickly they can be produced, MRAPs are not a catch-all solution to roadside bombs, however, according to the chairman of the MRAP task force. If we are worrying about helping the troops survive at the point of the blast and only working, worrying there, we've made a mistake. We need to work all the way back up that chain and stop people from planning the devices, the improvised explosive devices, stop them from having the materials to build the devices, stop them from having a network to decide where to put the device. You know, we have a lot of work we need to do and that work's being done. For troops downrange fighting insurgents in the war on terror, defense officials have one clear message. They should know that, that this is the Secretary of Defense's number one priority, that all of us are united in a joint team to ensure that that priority is met, that this is our number one issue, and we'll ensure that nothing uh, is between us and supporting them. So for now, according to the Defense Department, as long as roadside bombs continue to plague troops at war and MRAPs remain the most effective protection, these mine-resistant ambush-protected vehicles will remain the most important priority for the Defense Department. The new Pentagon Press Secretary Jeff Morrell reinforced the urgency at the Pentagon Wednesday. Marine Sergeant Brian Buckwalter is in our Pentagon Bureau and has the details. In his Pentagon briefing debut, Press Secretary Jeff Morrell addressed what he says is the Defense Department's number one acquisition priority, getting MRAPs or mind-resistant ambush-protected vehicles to troops overseas. Secretary Morrell says that the DOD is shifting its tactics so greater numbers of the MRAPs can be sent to troops as soon as possible. Secretary Gates last night asked Congress for permission to reprogram nearly $1.2 billion in our 2007 budget so that we can produce thousands more MRAPs. Recognizing that the need for these vehicles supersedes all other programs right now, each of the services has volunteered to contribute enough funds so that with Congress's blessing, we can purchase 2,650 additional MRAPs, bringing our total order to 6,415. What's more, the majority of those vehicles will be delivered by year's end. More money isn't the only reason why more vehicles will be produced by the end of December. Defense officials say the services and industry are looking for ways to streamline the process. I'll have more on that in the next edition of Around the Services. From the Pentagon, Marine Sergeant Brian Buckwalter. Just to recap some of those figures, John Young, MRAP Task Force Chairman, says Congress has provided $3.8 billion in fiscal year 2007 to purchase MRAPs. And DOD hopes to have about 3,900 of those in theater by the end of the year. MRAPs offer a defense against IEDs, one of the weapons of choice of al-Qaeda in Iraq. And the man believed to be the highest ranking Iraqi in that terrorist network has been captured. Multinational Force Iraq spokesman Brigadier General Kevin Bergner says they have Daoud Mahmoud al Mashadani in custody. He served as the Al Qaeda media emir for Baghdad and then was appointed the media emir for all of Iraq and served as an intermediary between AQI leader al Masri, Osama bin Laden, and Ayman al Zawahiri. In fact, communication between senior al-Qaeda leadership and al-Masri frequently went through Mashadani. 
General Bergner also says Al Mashadani has confirmed that foreigners are making the operational decisions for Al Qaeda in Iraq, not Iraqis. Secretary of Veterans Affairs Jim Nicholson announced Tuesday he has submitted his resignation, effective no later than October 1st of this year. It's been a real honor and a privilege for me to work uh, with each of you side by side as we serve together our veterans. Our veterans from the, the greatest generation to the, to the latest greatest generation and, and all those in between. Secretary Nicholson said he's leaving Veterans Affairs to return to the private sector. The number of amputees from OIF and OEF is just over 600 service members. New technology promises to make recovery easier for those wounded warriors. Marine Sergeant Adrian Riguez reports. Over the course of Operation Iraqi and Enduring Freedom, there have been many advances for prosthetic limbs for seriously injured service members. Here at Walter Reed Army Medical Center, the new prototype of the hardened sea leg has been unveiled. The human knee will support your weight at whatever angle you want to bend your knee at. Um, but the artificial leg doesn't know that. It only can be, it will go to wherever it's programmed. And right now, um, most artificial legs, when you're walking, it's just a spring. It's not a computerized leg like this. And so like all springs, they can collapse pretty easily. You fall a lot. Um, when I wear this leg, I almost never fall. Um, I only fall when I try to do something that the leg isn't programmed to do. For example, walking backwards. Um, I could never play basketball with this leg, not actively, but with this new version, I'll be able to. The prototype for the hardened sea leg was developed specifically to meet military requirements. And while eventually it will help the civilian community, it would never have been developed had it not been for the DOD investing the money. Marine Sergeant Adrian Riguez, Pentagon Channel News. TSP share prices for Wednesday, July 18th opened at 1202 for the G Fund, 1125 for the F Fund, 1731 for the C Fund, 2108 for the S Fund, and 2538 for the I Fund. For the Pentagon Channel, I'm Petty Officer Liz Murray.